Fair trade is an alternative approach to conventional trade aimed at improving the lives of smallholder farmers in developing countries. You're the development policy officer from Fair Trade Germany and member of various committees at Fair Trade International. Please tell us how exactly can smallholder farmers in developing countries benefit from fair trade products in an increasingly globalized food system? First of all, fair trade requires them to organize themselves in order to have more negotiation power, uh, in order to have a strong uh, position for negotiations on par with their buyers. If they wouldn't organize, it wouldn't happen. And I think fair trade's main asset is that they facilitate that organization, that they really help them in, in, in making them a good and effective organization. And uh, there's other benefits in terms of uh, the non-financial aspect of the investment of the premium money, say schooling, housing, better health, Uh, education, um, gender equity, child protection, all these are, in our opinion, let's say, aspects and quality aspects of fair trade, which might be uh, intrinsical in terms of you can't see that when you buy a fair trade product, but if you buy a fair trade coffee, one quality aspect of it that is most likely free of child labor, and uh, that is definitely a benefit that we bring to producers, that they position themselves in a in a way that their production is sustainable and uh, makes them also prepared for the future. So it's not just about money. I guess most benefits of fair trade go far beyond that. I believe that fair trade's experience over more than 20 years with over 1.5 million farmers can offer a valuable lesson on how small farmers need to be supported. Drawing from this experience, what would you suggest to donors and decision makers to increase farmers' voice, influence and organization? We are an organization that might be well known, but um, overall we do not representative even one percentage of world trade. You know, so uh, com we are comparatively small, although the importance goes beyond those figures, because we basically through existing we prove that trade can be done differently. So we always exercise also an indirect political power on other actors, those like uh, governments, for example, and also donors. But generally, one could say donors, uh, yes, they have supported fair trade for a long time uh, at various levels in various countries. Um, but it is not that fair trade is, is dependent on them in a way that would not allow operational functionality of fair trade. There are also donors who, who have a very long lasting relationship with fair trade, such as uh, DFID in the UK. For years, they have supported the organization, the build-up of fair trade. But the relationship is, is in any project, in any case, different. I cannot say there's a blueprint how to what donors should do. Uh, maybe they should join more amongst themselves and kind of uh, align their their conditions, how and when to support a given organization. So uh, it's a continuous struggle. Um, But increasingly, the fair trade system is just sufficient uh, with licensing uh, incomes, and uh, we operate even without donors, although we often need donors in order to establish, for example, a new product, say carbon credits or gold uh, where, and precious metals, where we would not have been able to establish a new standard and make it operational without donor support. So sometimes it's very hard to find government support. Um, certainly, certain agencies development ministries, they support us on a project basis, uh, we wouldn't say that it is easy to deal with government. And as a private NGO, we do not even want to be uh, kind of influenced too much by government. We rather want to exercise pressure on them by demonstrating a different trade is possible. This year, UN member states are finalizing the Sustainable Development Goals for the period of 2016 till 2030. The SDGs will continue the fight against extreme poverty. What do you think, Martin? Is Fairtrade able to contribute to the overall agenda of the SDG goals? Certainly, yes. Uh, I mean, there is no chapter called Fair Trade within the SDGs. But Fair Trade in itself is, is not, say, a, a unique topic. It's rather that Fair Trade is operating in all kinds of fields, say, education. Yeah? That certainly is reflected in the SDGs. Environment, it is reflected. Health, human development, um, The trade, I think trade uh, conditions, sustainable trade, all that is there, more or less. We, as an organization, we also participated in, in the development process of the SDG at various levels, national, international level, uh, countrywide. 
And uh, for example, if fair trade enables rural development, and it does that, that has been proven uh, in, again in some studies, uh, some recent studies, um, fair trade can provide the preconditions for rural development. Education, uh, a lot of money, uh, fair trade premium money goes into educating children. But if fair trade can change the conditions on the ground for agriculture, then there is an interest to stay in the countryside and develop your own uh, livelihood there. I could say or talk about a lot of other examples, say uh, health, what fair trade provides health issues, uh, environment, more sustainable production, uh, natural resource protection. So I would say, yes, fair trade is certainly a means to, to progress towards the sustainable development goal. Last year, fair trade's absolute growth has increased enormously since the founding of the label. Fair trade Germany recorded an increase by 26% compared to 2013. It sounds really perfect. However, the market share of some products is still not yet high. When we talk about the market share of coffee, we talk about 2.9%. And when we talk about the market share of bananas, for example, we talk about 8%. The market share of chocolate is around, it's under 1% even. And for flowers, it's really high, it's 26%. However, um, I would like to know, in your opinion, what can be done to increase the market share for fair trade products or even introduce a larger amount of them to the market? Where, where are the leverage points and who needs to be addressed? There is no one way forward to reach what you were just describing. But um, if you look more careful or behind the numbers, for example, 2.9% of the coffee market in Germany, it sounds very little, but actually there are more than 350 coffee brands on the market. And we have come from zero, uh, no, almost at 3%. That means actually something. But the coffee market is very difficult, very competitive, so very difficult to reach even 1%. But if you look into a market that we have basically established, like say, sustainable flowers, there the story is totally different. There in a few years time, we came from zero to 25% as of today. Beyond all these figures, the importance of fair trade is not such figures, actually. If we have 25% market share, say, with, again, with flowers, that means the other 75% have to show efforts that they, that they do something too. Fair trade power is not just in the numbers. It's in its significance as a living example that trade can be done differently in what way or other. It must not always be and will certainly not always be fair trade. But um, we are there to demonstrate that different trade is possible and we set an example and that example is oftentimes copied and also that is an indirect impact of fair trade. Martin, please tell us about fair trade's future. In recent years we have had a lot of professional development within fair trade. We are now accepted as a professional business partner and then uh, a full swing shift of power to the global south happens within the fair trade system. You find Similar organizations nowadays in India and Brazil, Southern Africa, East Africa. There will be more in the future in Eastern Europe, in Southeast Asia, be it Vietnam or Hong Kong. Everywhere we establish national fair trade movements in order, not just to, to sell products or trade products from there to here, but to open the domestic markets. So in the future, Kenyans will buy, or even today, they already can buy Kenyan coffee, fair trade certified coffee for Kenyans on the domestic market. The same with Indian fair trade tea for India. So that is one of, nowadays you talk to me as a representative of a rather still powerful northern country within the fair, uh, the fair trade system, but maybe in two years time you will rather like to talk to fair trade India. Thank you very much, Martin. It was really nice talking to you.